Hey everyone. So in today's video, I'm going to go over the muscles of the chest, abdomen, and back. So I'll start with the chest and abdomen. From this view, we can see the pectoralis major, the external and internal intercostals, the serratus anterior, the external and internal obliques, and the rectus abdominis. So the pectoralis major is attached to the humerus, which means it's going to move the shoulder. So it pulls the arm both forward and closer to the body. So it causes flexion of the shoulder and adduction at the shoulder. The external intercostals elevate the rib cage, so they cause inhalation, while the internal intercostals depress the rib cage. They make the thoracic cavity smaller and cause exhalation. So the intercostals aren't the most important breathing muscles. The most important breathing muscle is actually one found in the abdomen. So that big wall of muscle that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity that's the muscle called the diaphragm. So when the diaphragm contracts, it pulls downward, which makes the thoracic cavity larger and causes inhalation to occur. So all of the muscles pictured here, the rectus abdominis, internal obliques, external obliques, can pull the body forward, so they cause flexion of the vertebral column. But the external and internal obliques, because they run obliquely, they run diagonally, they also cause a twisting motion um, so twisting of the spine um, or lateral flexion of the spine. On the open torso model, you can see the different layers of the abdominal muscles. So there's the external obliques, internal obliques, and then all the way on the inside, the deepest layer is a muscle called the transversus abdominis. So because these muscle fibers run side to side, it doesn't cause flexion of the spine, it only can cause compression of the abdominal contents because it wraps around the whole torso like a belt. So when it tightens, it compresses the abdomen. So this muscle seen here is the serratus anterior. All of those little pieces attached to the ribs are part of the serratus anterior. Um, and this is what makes it look serrated like a knife. So the serratus anterior pulls the scapula forward so it protracts the scapula. And the pectoralis minor, which lays over top of the serratus anterior, has the same action because it's attached to the acromion process of the scapula. So when it pulls down, it pulls the scapula forward. It's pretty easy to remember the function of the serratus anterior um, if you follow it around to the back of the model. Because once you're looking at the backside, you can see 
it's also attached to the scapula, which is how it's able to pull the scapula forward. Moving on to the muscles of the back, this is the rhomboid major, rhomboid minor, and this very large triangularly shaped muscle is the trapezius. So both of these muscles are attached to the scapula and pull it closer to the spine. So when we pull the scapula back, we call it retraction of the scapula, or some people might say adduction of the scapula. I like retraction better. But the trapezius, um, because it's such a large muscle, it doesn't just retract the scapula. Um, using the superior fibers of the trapezius will shrug the shoulders so elevation of the scapula, while the inferior fibers will depress the scapula. This other large triangularly shaped muscle is the latissimus dorsi, which is attached to the humerus. So the latissimus dorsi will pull the arm both closer to the body and back. So it causes extension at the shoulder and adduction of the whole arm. And last but not least is the erector spinae. And the erector spinae is a group of three muscles in the back, the iliocostalis, longissimus spinalis to easily remember their order um, you can just remember I love spaghetti so these muscles help maintain an upright posture or um, we can say that they extend the spine so that's pulling the spine back All right, so that wraps it up for the muscles of the torso. I hope it was helpful. Good luck studying. Keep at it.